Hey everyone, thanks for checking out Sortly. Today I'm going to give you a high level overview of how to bulk import your data via a CSV file or an Excel spreadsheet. Now you can use your own template or you can download ours and I'm going to show you, walk you through that entire process overall. So first and foremost, before you even begin that process, typically if you're going to use our template, you're going to want to have your folder structure built out at a high level. So let's put out uh, an example folder here. I'm going to create a new folder, so I'll hit add new, I'm going to hit add folder. And I'm just going to call this demo just for the purpose of this uh, video here. So I'll click add. That's then going to create that folder for us. I'm then going to click into this demo folder and I'm going to put a subfolder in here. Uh, I'm going to call it IT, uh, IT products, right? So we'll just call it IT in this case. And I'm going to hit add. So this is kind of building out a high level folder structure for us. We could even go further and indicate the different products. Let's say we're working with Apple products specifically, you could go in and build it for a MacBook Pro or an iPhone uh, or an iPad as an example, and then any corresponding items would reside in that folder. Now, once we have the folder structure built out, we can go back to the All Items tab, and we're gonna be able to see this current structure. So I have a couple folders that already exist here, um, but we're mainly gonna focus on the demo folder. So first and foremost, you really wanna make sure your folder structure is built out uh, in this case. The second thing that you want to do before we begin bulk importing data is going into the settings panel. You'll click settings again, and we're going to go to the custom fields. This is where you can build out anything that is proprietary to your business. So just to keep you aware, let's take a step back for a second. I'm going to go to the items tab. I'm going to click on the add new, add item, and I'm going to click in the show all fields section. So primarily what we want to focus on is these top seven or eight fields that we offer. So up to item variants, uh, these are the default fields that we offer. So if any of your fields correspond to any of these existing fields, that's totally fine. In this case, we have an item name, we have a quantity, a min level, we have price, we have tags, notes, the ability for a QR code or barcode, item variants. We can also even use a photo in this case if we like. So those are the default fields that we provide. If those fields are not enough for what you need, you're then gonna wanna go into the settings panel, settings again, and then create some custom fields. Now, we offer a bunch of different custom fields, and depending on the plan that you go with, you'll have different restrictions there. Um, we're currently on the Ultra plan, so there's unlimited entries available to us. If you're on the Advanced plan, you have 10 custom fields. Uh, if you're on Enterprise, you have unlimited as well, and the free plan only has one. Uh, by clicking on the Add Custom Field at the top right of the screen, this is going to bring you to the panel where you can see all of the different custom fields that you can work with on your side of things. So feel free uh, to build these out as needed. Now, once these fields have been built, you can then go to the Settings panel again. We'll click Settings, and we're going to click on the Bulk Import tab. Now, I'm going to show you both processes here, one for the Quick Import and then one for the Advanced Import. But I'm going to start by building out my template by going to the Advanced Import tab. And then I'm going to click on this download button here. Now you're going to get two different options. One is for a basic inventory and one is for the expert. I highly recommend the expert template. It's not as advanced as it may seem. Um, so I would click on the expert template. This is very basic, meaning it's only going to have just the default fields that we offer uh, and really just those custom fields. There's no additional options for like photos, things like that. It's going to be very, very basic. Um, so the expert template will give you a little bit more flexibility there. So I'll click expert. And then there is also the option for you to choose standard items or items with variants. Now, in most cases, you're probably just going to choose standard items. In this example, I'm going to choose standard items. Um, however, if you do have items with variants, specifically if you're working with like clothing uh, or things of that nature where there's different sizes, different colorways, things of that sort, you can use the uh, variants option. Do know it's a little bit more complex, but in general, it, you should be able to follow through with some of the sample data there. Once this is good, click on the download button and it's going to download that file for you. Now, once this is downloaded, you're going to get a template that looks something like this. So this is the uh, standard or the expert template that we work with on our side of things um, that is available to you. And in the bottom, you can see here that we give you a couple different tabs that you can kind of play around with. I'm going to build this out on my side of things, but we can also work with the sample data. So if we click on the sample tab, this is going to give us an overview of some like of how to build out this specific template and how you can utilize this on a daily basis. Um, so you can kind of see how you can create different entries here. You have your entry name, you have a quantity, you have a unit field if you're using that, you have a min level, price, etc. And it just goes on and on. And you can go through 
you know, as you scroll to the right or left, you'll be able to see this information specifically. And even these yellow columns, these are the custom fields that have been built within the software. So that's available to you as well. Now, another thing here is there's a help tab um, that you can reference. And this is just gonna give you, based on all the fields that you've built out, just some examples of what you could put in those fields specifically. So um, all these ones in yellow, again, these are all the custom fields that we built out. And you'll kind of see some information here um, that is available to you. And then the last tab here, this is going to be for barcodes and QR codes if you're planning on using those within the system. Now, if you're using these codes, this means that your items already have codes on them and you're not creating codes through Sortly. Uh, so essentially what this means is if you have a UPC code, if you have an EAN 13, um, if you have a code 39, or if you have a QR code or other, even a data matrix, these codes are being provided from your vendors or your clients that you're working with they're not being generated in Sortly. So I'm gonna show you how to create those codes. Basically going through this process, you're gonna create automatically a code in Sortly so you don't have to perform the additional step of linking those items into the system. All right, so let's jump back into the Add New Inventory tab and let's actually uh, zoom in here a little bit so I can kind of show you guys an example of what this looks like. So entry type, entry type can only be one of two things. It's either gonna be an item or it's gonna be a folder. In this case, we already built the folders uh, on our inside of Sortly so that we know where the items are gonna be placed. But in this case, uh, if you wanted to create a folder, you absolutely could do so at a high level. So in this case, I'm gonna work with items. So I'm just gonna type in item, and I'm probably gonna put in a couple different items here. So I'm gonna copy that a few different times. The entry name, this is the name of the item that you're working with. So I'm gonna type in a MacBook Pro. We're gonna have, uh, we'll have an iPhone. Let's do an iPad and let's do, um, let's say iMac and then iPod. So we're working with Apple products here, uh, making it super, super simple just to follow along. And then for the quantity field, this is where you put in the quantity of the said item. So in this case, maybe I have 25 of this, uh, 15 of this, 11 of this. 24 of this and 89 of these. So you can really just build this in on your side of things. Now, unit of measure, again, this is completely optional. If we leave it blank, it's just gonna be a default unit. However, if we go over to the help tab, we can reference under the unit field, we have all these different options that we can go with, you know, pounds, kilogram, gram, ounces, yards, feet, etc. So there's a lot of different options that you can work with on your end when you're building that into the system. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to use a unit of measure. It's just gonna set it to a default quantity uh, or unit, and you can add that in. Now for min level, we can go in and set a minimum threshold if we want to. So I could go in and say five, you know, eight, nine, two, and three. So you can just put in whichever parameters you want here. You can also add a price point so we can just add anything in. You won't want to add, especially if your items are over, um, you know, over a thousand dollars, you won't want to put in any commas or anything like that. You will also not want to add the price tag to those items. Um, so you can use cents, of course, um, that's totally available to you, uh, but you cannot put a comma. It's going to create errors, everything like that within the system. Um, you'll be able to see very easily overall in the setup. Now for notes, you can add any notes relative to the item. Maybe you want to tag these items. So a good option here would be for Apple. I'm going to copy this tag and I'm going to paste it down. And then the primary folder. So if you remember, if we jump back into our Sortly account, we can go back into the items tab and we'll see the folder that I want to move the items into is this demo folder and then specifically into the IT folder. So in this case, I can go back to this template that I'm working with and we're going to just go in and put demo and then the subfolder, we're going to say IT. So since these are all going into the same folder, I want to put or copy that. I can copy and paste it and move that along in the setup here. Now, for photos, um, photo links, uh, there's a couple different ways that you can add photos. Um, specifically, when you're working with a bulk import, you'll need the images to be hosted somewhere, either on your website, so on a server, uh, you could use Dropbox or Google Drive, or if they're publicly facing and you wanted to pull a uh, image from the web, you can absolutely do so. So I'm going to show you quickly how I would pull an image from the web. Um, I'm going to go to a website here called Pixbay. And from here, I can click into find an item that I want to work with. And what I'm looking for specifically here is to copy the image address um, so that when I paste it, it should end in a .jpg. So you can kind of see that up here. 
uh, it'll make more sense when I dump it into the photo tab here. So you'll see that it ends in a .jpg file. That's ideally what you want to look for. Um, specifically, you can be a .jpg, .png, .jpg, .jpeg. Um, those are the typic, uh, typical formats that we support on our side of things. And again, there is opportunity for you to host on like Google Drive, Box.com, Dropbox uh, as a way to house those photos and then you can bulk import them into Sortly. So in this case, I'm just gonna work with that one photo, but you can imagine you can add up to eight photos per item. So if you have a bunch of different links, you can generate these, of course. And this is initially only needed to get onto the Sortly servers. So once you import that image into Sortly, it's gonna be in Sortly forever. So you don't have to house that image in your Dropbox account anymore or anything like that. And specifically when you export, or if you ever export data from Sortly, Sortly is going to generate a photo link for you with that exact photo. So we just need that data to hit the server, and then once it hits the server, it stays on there forever. So keep in mind, um, it's very easy to, to kind of do that, and we'll have other articles on how to uh, use Dropbox, how to use Google Drive, those type of platforms to host those images, and then how to pull those images into the system. Now, going into the barcode data field, um, let's reference back to the sample tab here. Now, if we go over to the uh, barcode QR code data field, you'll see that the first field is for the specific barcode number, and then the second field here is for the specific code type that we're working with. So in this case, we could make a very simple code on our side of things. So let's go back into the add new inventory, and let's just do you know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine as our code. And then we can go to this barcodes types tab at the bottom, and we can select whichever code type that we wanna work with. Most code types are gonna be UPC. Um, you'll also see code 128 is very common, so I'm gonna copy this one. You're only gonna copy the column A types. Um, this just lets you know what type it is. You're gonna copy this format here. So it kind of goes backwards uh, on this side, or .iso code 128. So just copy this format here, and then we're gonna go back into the Add New Inventory tab, and we're gonna paste that file in here, and that data is gonna be available to us. Now we can add multiple codes onto a single item. I also have created additional barcode QR code fields that you can kind of see here. Um, we have like an email address, we have product conditions. So if I wanted to you know, pull that information in, I can. If I want to choose vendor data, I can. So a lot of these, um, all these products are Apple, so I could put the Apple as the vendor. File attachment, those type of uh, fields here, you can fill in all of this. Now, to uh, make this process pretty easy, I'm gonna keep it very simple and just fill in those fields that we filled in so far. Um, from here, you're actually gonna wanna export your data into a CSV file um, or an Excel spreadsheet. And the main thing is if you're using the advanced import option, so through our system, you're gonna wanna make sure it's in a CSV format. If you're using the quick import option, which I'll show you both methods here, you're gonna use the, uh, you can use Excel or CSV. So I'm gonna click on uh, file, I'm gonna click download here, and then I'm do a uh, comma separated value, so a CSV option here. It's gonna ask me where I wanna save it, I'm gonna say the desktop, and I'm gonna hit save. Now at this point here, I'm gonna jump back into Sortly, and we're gonna go back into the settings panel, settings again, and then bulk import. Now I'm gonna show you both methods here because e whether you're using your own spreadsheet or ours, it's very easy to get the data into the system. So I'm gonna go with a quick import option here, and then from here, it's gonna ask you to find the file that you're working with. So I'm gonna click on Browse. I'm gonna then find the uh, folder. I'm gonna click the space bar here so I can kind of see this, what this template looks like. This is the data that I was looking for, so that's perfect. I'm gonna click that here. And then I'm gonna hit the Continue option. So from here, if it's successful and it makes it to that point, you're gonna to get to the point where you can map your fields. So this is why it's important, important to use uh, the custom fields on your end because you're pushing the data from that file that already exists into those specific fields. Now, since I already downloaded the Sortly template, a lot of the data is already gonna match up very nicely. So we have entry name to item name. We have quantity to quantity, unit to unit, min level to min level. So you're able to see all of these fields very easily can fill in. And you'll see once they are connected, you're gonna get a little, the fields are gonna turn green and you'll have a green check mark there. And then as we scroll down, we're gonna be able to see those custom fields. So for example, the vendors option, I can go in and find you know that vendor information that we were working with and that data is gonna be pushed through in the system here. Once this looks good at this point, we can hit continue. 
it's going to let us know if any errors have been found, and then we can hit import. So it's going to import this inventory directly into the system. Now, one thing to note about this method is that it's not going to push the data into the fields that are the folders rather that we want it to. This method specifically is going to send you one batch file, so one bulk file with all the data associated with it, and then you're going to have to manually move those items into the system as you would like. So as we wait for this to uh, upload into the system so I can show you this orientation, one other thing about these files is that if you're working with a CSV file or an Excel spreadsheet, it's only going to allow you to have up to 2,000 line items at once. So let's say you have 15, 20, 100,000 items. You need to break that file down into smaller chunks in order for that to be processed within the system. Now, when the item is successfully updated or when the uh, file is updated, you'll see that five items were imported and we can either download a report or we can go to those imported items. So in this case, you'll see that there is a bulk import that occurred uh, today and then you're gonna see all these items. And it generates this file for you, bulk import with today's date, 216. You're gonna be able to see this data here. Now, if we wanted it to go into the demo folder, we would have to select all of our items here by highlighting first one of them, then we'll select all, and then we would move all of those items within the system. So we'd hit the move button, we would move this item, we'd select the quantity we wanna move, and then we would select the destination. In this case, I'm not gonna go through this method, but I'm gonna show you the other option, which is the method that we recommend on our side, which is to use our template. So in this case, instead of using the quick import, we're gonna click on advanced import, and then we've already downloaded the file, we've already saved it in a CSV in the UTF-8 format, so that's very important, make sure you save in that format. Now we're gonna choose that file again, we'll choose this add new inventory file, we'll hit import, and now it's going to import for us automatically based on the template that we have. So all the fields that are filled out, um, everything that we've added to that template is automatically going to be imported into the system. Now, if there's ever any errors, we're going to output a report for you that says, hey, we were able to import X number of items. These other items need to have adjustments made to them. And specifically, you know, it may be related to a field such as a drop down field. Maybe that item or that that uh, criteria doesn't add, isn't added into that drop down field. So this is a good way for you to kind of look at that data, see what's missing, and then move forward from there. So we can see all five data items were imported. If we go into the items tab, we can now go into the demo folder and we can go into IT. And look, all of our items pushed right into that IT folder. And you can even see the photo that we added from the web was automatically bulk imported into this specific folder. So at a high level, this is how you would bulk import your data into the system. Um, if you have any questions or anything uh, that comes up in terms of errors that you need uh, confirmation on, please feel free to reach out to our support team. We're more than happy to help you out with any of these questions here. With that being said, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much.